Hi, I want to show you how to do a print and cut from Cricut Design Space with a remote print. So let's say you want to take the print to Office Depot and have it printed out instead of using up your own ink. Or maybe your printer's broken or maybe you don't even have a printer. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to use virtual printing. So you have to have a virtual printer installed and I'll go through and show you what that looks like and give you some names. Your, print, your computer may already have this built in. Some of the new Windows 8 machines come with a virtual printer. You may have had one installed with some other software you have. But if you don't, you can go and add one. But that has to be done before you get ready to do this process. So once I've got my print then cut ready to go, I'm working on a graduation card for a kindergartner. So I've got it ready, and I've, it's all flattened and ready to go. So I'm going to tell it to print. I want to tell it to go, and then the print then cut is going to be the first screen. And so it's laid out all here. It's got the bleed zone on it, and it's got the registration marks. This is what I want. So I'm going to tell it to print and go. But now I'm not going to want it to print. What I want it to do is virtual print, which means it's going to spool what would be sent to the printer into a PDF file instead. So I actually have a lot of choices on this computer because it's been around a long time. I've got a broader bin PDF creator. I've got Bullzip, which is one you might think about downloading. I've got Cute PDF Writer, which is another popular one. I have Nitro PDF Creator, and I have Nova PDF, and I have PDF Creator, and I have Quicken PDF Printer. Some of these, because I test these a lot, some of them are because they were added with different software. So you may have one there, and if you do, then you're good to go. If not, I would suggest you go download. PDF Creator is probably my favorite because it has some other features we won't use now, but we do use in other projects. Bullzip is, is the second most one I would recommend. So let's use that one for this demo. I'll click PDF Printer. So in other words, instead of a real printer, I'm picking a virtual printer, and I'm just going to tell it to print. So it's going to spool and, and talk to the virtual printer for a second. Then I'm going to have some choices to make. I want to give it a name and a location. I'm going to just go with the default name in this case. And I'm going to put it in my Dropbox. And I'm going to check to open the destination folder after creation and open the document after creation. That way I can show them to you. And then I'm going to click Save. And now instead of sending it to the printer, it's sending it to a PDF. And so here's what our PDF looks like. You should see that this is very familiar. It looks exactly like what was on our mat. It has our registration marks. It has the bleed zone, and it has our image in exactly the right size and exactly the right position on the page. That's what a PDF printer does, and that's what it's for. Uh, this also shows me where on the, on the hard drive this was. This is the flash file. This is what I will take with me to Office Depot or email them. Now the one thing we need to be sure of is that when they print this, they print this at 100%. So when they go to file print, they would need to make sure that they select 100%. Um, the default here is on some printers is to shrink the oversized pages or whatever. We want to make sure that they print at 100%. So you just tell the tech at Office Depot or whatever that you want it printed at 100%. Because if, if it doesn't print it at 100%, it isn't going to match your cut. But that's really the only thing you have to remember to tell them to print it at 100%. So you're going to take this to Office Depot. They're going to print this for you. They can print you a stack. If you want to be extra safe, you can print one from home and match it up and be sure the registration marks are all in the same place and everything looks the same size before you let them run 100 of them. But it should work perfectly. Then you're going to want to come back. And what we would have done on the day after we saved the PDF is we would have just X'd out of this and said, yes, we want to cancel the cut. So we saved that file. We don't make any changes. And we come home from Office Depot with our stack. Now we're going to tell it to go. We're going to tell it to print and go. But we've already printed. So we're just going to cancel. And then we're going to go on to our cut. We're going to take one of our prints from Office Depot. We're going to load it on our mat just like we would. 
and then we're going to continue. I don't have this machine hooked up right now, but if I did, it would just continue and allow me to load, set, and go. And it would cut just like any other print and cut. You do want to use the same browser for saving your PDF that you use for cutting because the browsers handle things a little bit differently. So two things you want to remember, stick with the same browser and make sure they print it at 100%. You also don't want to move anything on here either time because that can change it. You can't change them from this screen, but from the screen before you want to make sure you don't move anything. And that's all there is to it. Now Cricut tells you officially that this will not work, but it will work. This is what virtual printing is for. It's used all the time. In fact, once you start using this, you'll use it for all kinds of things, for saving web pages, for keeping track of things. It's just a really good way to go paperless with a lot of things because anything you can print, you can now spool to a PDF. So you do need to be careful when you're downloading as usual with anything else. Make sure you got your antivirus on and that sort of thing. But I really recommend that you get a PDF printer if you don't already have one. And if you ever need to print from Cricut Design Space and have it printed somewhere else, then this is an easy way to do it. So I hope that answers your questions about this, and I hope you'll enjoy using this technique to have your Cricut images printed somewhere besides home. Thanks for watching.